GLC invites you to visit us on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash GLC TV. Here you can stay in touch with all of the latest GLC news along with daily scriptural inspirations, current specials in our bookstore, links to our newest shows, and online media plus articles from trusted sources. Feel free to drop us a message or a question by posting to our page. Please help us out and like our page by clicking on the thumbs up button. Don't delay. Drop by the GLC Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash GLC TV. We want to interact with you today. Praise God and welcome to the GLC Midweek Update, whatever you call it, because we're doing so many specials. Well, we're doing them every day right now Mm -hmm. because of what's going on in Israel. I think this is only Tuesday. This is only Tuesday. The good news is is that I think this is the sixth ceasefire that both sides have agreed to, but it's so far today, it's the first one that Hamas hasn't broken, even even though there was a lot of uh, bombing by them rockets flying into israel just before the ceasefire went into effect how many hours are we into that ceasefire do you know well it started at 8 a.m in okay. israel okay so that means yeah okay this was one that egypt brokered brokered mm-hmm. ready for the letter we are ready for the letter let's have it this is a good letter and it's a response to the books and we're getting lots of mail on those books thank you dear jlc family Thank you for the gift of Al's book. It is quite good reading. My father used to be a local journalist when I was small, and he taught me how to observe and even let me report once. (laughs) So I am aware of how things can be interpreted and how people can be swayed one way or the other. It is important to hear both sides, but most important is to hear the truth. Thank you for bringing God's truth to the nations. May Adonai watch over all of you and protect you in the days ahead. In Messiah's name, Jeanette from Bedford, New Hampshire. That's an excellent letter. It's Appreciate an excellent it. letter. I'm glad you're enjoying the book, Jeanette. It was great hearing from you. Mm-hmm. Well, we have uh, Lars Anderson's video for the day. There is quite a bit of wind in this video, so you just have to bear through that and listen to what he's saying, and we'll be back in five minutes right after he's done telling us what's going on. Shalom, I'm Lars Anderson with the Watchman International coming to you from Israel on the border to Gaza. Today is the 9th of Av. It's the day of the fast in the fifth month. And it is a very serious day for the Jewish people. And we are calling all of you to join us in fasting and prayer for this day, standing in the gap for Israel. Uh, Phase one in the the operation uh, Protective Edge is now uh, completed. Um, More or less all the tunnels have been destroyed that led into Israel from Gaza. And Israel is now at crossroads uh, how to proceed. Uh, The defense minister said yesterday that the Operation Protective Edge is not over. And uh, they also said that all options are on the table. Uh, This morning it was announced that Israel has now agreed once again to the Egyptian ceasefire proposal. And uh, this is what actually caused the ground operation three weeks ago, uh, exactly on the fast in the fourth month, when Israel uh, also then agreed to ceasefire, but Hamas said no. Then Israel decided to uh, go ahead with the ground operation into Gaza. Uh, This time Hamas has has said yes. Uh, Israel says we will watch and see, but they have agreed to send now uh, an envoy to Cairo for ceasefire talks, how to uh, more permanently end this crisis. Uh, We need to understand that um, there was a a spokesperson for the Israeli army who said yesterday that uh, Israel had been able, if they wanted to, to take out Hamas within a week. 
and then it would have taken about two years to clean up here in Gaza. But he said the government never, never gave us that uh, order. So that has not been our goal during this operation, protective edge in the ground operation. Uh, it has been instead to concentrate on this um, danger from the tunnels leading into Israel. So we need to pray now, friends, because uh, the, the conflict is not over. Hamas has agreed to a ceasefire now, as I said, but they've also uh, encouraged everyone in the West Bank, Judea and Samaria, to uh, instead have three days of rage and terror unleashed against Israel. Yesterday there were two terror attacks in Jerusalem. One was uh, with a tractor that attacked civilians and a bus turning it over. Fortunately, no people were in the bus, but one person died on the street. Uh, another young soldier was shot in the stomach uh, close to Mount Scopus and the Hebrew University. So it's brewing in Judea and Samaria. Uh, while pr this Operation Protective Edge has been going on, uh, actually Palestinians have been killed in clashes with the police uh, almost on a daily basis. So we need to pray, friends, because Israel is now at a very difficult uh, uh, time. And uh, only God can uh, now help. And we, we plead with you, stand with us this day. Let's go before the throne of grace. Let's plead for mercy. And uh, what we are, the scripture that we are encouraging all of you to pray from uh, is Joel 2, 17. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the temple porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? And then it says in the next verse, then the Lord will be jealous for his land and take pity on his people. Let's believe that uh, this will be the outcome of our prayers and our fasting today as we go before the Lord on behalf of Israel before God for his restoration to come instead of judgment. God has promised in the book of Zechariah that these days of fasting in the fourth and the fifth month will eventually be turned into uh, days of feasting and rejoicing for Israel. And it's only because of answer to prayer. So thank you for standing with us. Thank you to all of those who have decided to fast with us today. Go to our website, thewatchman.org, and see the specific prayer points that we are agreeing for today. And uh, God bless you. I'm Lars Anderson with The Watchman International from Israel on the border to Gaza. Shalom. Important information, albeit mm -hmm. windy information. Yes. So, yeah. Today was the, the 9th of Av, of course, that in, uh, sundown. sundown Tuesday in uh, Israel. Well, after Lars did his video, which was early in the morning on Tuesday, this happened. This comes to us from Arut Sheva. A Palestinian terrorist stabbed a security guard at the main entrance to the Ma'ale Adumin settlement just outside of Jerusalem around 1.30 Tuesday afternoon, and he fled the scene. The guard had stopped the young man and asked to see the contents of a green plastic bag that he held in his hand. According to District Police Commander Kobe Cohen, there was a knife in the bag. Without taking the knife out of the bag, the Palestinian stabbed the guard in the lower part of his body and immediately fled the scene. The guard still tried to pursue him and shot at him. In an Initial investigation showed that the suspect was picked up by a Palestinian vehicle that sped into the nearby village of Kafar Azria. The guard was taken to Hadassah University Medical Center in Jerusalem, where he was admitted for surgery. The police commander clarified that it was a nationally motivated incident and not a criminal one. And I'll end that article there because it, the next part just recaps what he, what Lars had told us mm -hmm. happened yesterday uh -huh. so there you are okay we now have various articles that come to us from various sources at Arutz Sheva 
Italy said on Tuesday it's expelling a Moroccan imam caught on video inciting violence against the Jews. The cleric was filmed during a Friday sermon in a mosque near Venice last month calling for Jews to be killed one by one, according to the Middle East Media Research Institute, or also Memory, which, by the way, published the video on its website. After experts carried out a thorough examination of the footage, Italy's interior minister, Angelino Alfano, said he had ordered the expulsion of Raudi Aldabar for seriously disturbing public order, being a danger to national security, and for religious discrimination. Aldabar, an imam in northern Italy, appeared in the video to launch into a diatribe against the Jews, in which he said, O oh Allah, bring upon them that which will make us happy. Count them one by one and kill them one by one. Italy, like many other European countries, has experienced a wave of anti-Semitic attacks and, and incitement in the recent months. Just last week, the Associated Press reported anti-Semitic graffiti and swastikas that have appeared across the city of Rome. Some of the graffiti referred to the escalating violence in Gaza and included taunts such as, Jews, the end is near. The mayor of Rome offered his solidarity with Rome's Jewish community and said the graffiti, which appeared near Jewish-owned businesses, was an offense to all Romans. Six months ago, boxes containing pigs' heads were sent to the Israeli embassy in Rome and the city synagogue. A letter inside contained derogatory comments about the Holocaust and references to Theodore Herzl, considered the founder of modern political Zionism. Among, among other incidents in Italy, a prominent Italian philosopher issued an alarming call to shoot Zionists. Violent anti-Semitic demonstrations have been taking place in Germany, where an imam in Berlin recently called on Muslims to kill Zionist Jews. In his sermon, given at a mosque and translated by memory, the imam expressed support for Gaza and stated, Gaza is the land of glory, the land of jihad, the land of honor, which is facing the strongest war machine, the Zionist Jews, these criminals, these slayers of prophets. Just two weeks ago, a protest in Berlin turned ugly as the protesters chanted anti-Jewish slogans. In a video taken at the rally and posted on the website of the Tablet Magazine, hundreds of protesters can be seen chanting in German, Jew, Jew, cowardly pig, come on out and fight on your own. The president of the Central Council of Jews in Germany said in a statement following the rally, we're currently experiencing in this country an explosion of evil and violent hatred of Jews, which shocks and dismays all of us. We would never in our lives have thought it possible anymore that anti-Semitic views of the nastiest and most primitive kind can be chanted on German streets. Some of the most notable protests have occurred in Paris, where far left and is, uh, Islamic extremists defied a ban on protests over the conflict between Israel and terrorist groups in Gaza and took to the streets last Saturday. The protesters wrought havoc in central Paris, confronting police with serious violence. Rioters have also vandalized several Paris synagogues over the past several weeks, including a firebombing incident. In Hungary, the mayor of Erpatak, Mihaly Zoltan Oroz, was filmed at a rally on Sunday ordering the hanging of effigies of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and former President Shimon Peres in protest against the Gaza conflict. The rally appears to be an attempt by the Jabbok party to mimic the success of far-left and Islamist groups in Western Europe who have used Israel's military operation in Gaza to stoke the flames of anti-Semitism. The Jabbok party, Hungary's third largest, often espouses openly racist and anti-Semitic views. Hungary's foreign ministry condemned the incident in a statement on Monday, accusing the mayor of using the Gaza conflict to incite hatred. Israel's ambassador to Hungary has demanded a government inquiry. Hmm. And late Monday afternoon, President Obama signed a bill granting an additional $225 million in taxpayer dollars for Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system. Congress approved the money last week before lawmakers left for their annual summer break. The new package is intended to replenish Israel's capabilities. The Iron Dome is designed to intercept rockets that are fired toward populated areas and has proven very effective, 
with a success rate of 90%. The system targets short-range rockets with a range between 2 miles and 45 miles. Each interceptor costs as much as $100,000. <laughs> Meanwhile in Britain, Prime Minister David Cameroon's office said Monday that in light of the ongoing operations in Gaza, Britain is reviewing licenses to sell arms and military goods to Israel, according to the AFP. The announcement from Downing Street comes after Cameron said early Monday that the United Nations was to condemn, was right to condemn the shelling of a UN school in Gaza, which killed 10 people, but he declined to say whether he thought it breached international law. Cameron was one of several European leaders to criticize Israel over its actions in Gaza. Licenses for the sale of military goods to Israel from Britain are mainly to supply weapons, control, and targeting systems, and components for ammunition, drones, and armored vehicles. And a Spanish newspaper, El País, reported Monday night that Spain has already decided to suspend weapon sales to Israel. According to the report, a ministerial committee reached that decision last Thursday. Spanish arms sales to Israel are limited and only made up 1% of the total Spanish exports in 2013. The newspaper noted, but the move is meant to send a political message to the Jewish state. Why don't they send one to Hamas? Amen. Well, I don't know. That doesn't make sense. I hope that uh, a, a lot of you are watching like Hannity on Fox News. Um, yesterday evening he was over in israel and even in the gaza strip and he went down into the tunnels he had a uh, an idf uh spokes lady spokes lady who was actually from oregon she's been with the idf for three years um giving him a tour of one of these tunnels and she told him that each tunnel has to be costing two to three million dollars wow. each tunnel and all of the concrete that is used Israel gave to Gaza so that they could build mm -hmm. hospitals and schools really and nice. and help their infrastructure and this is what they chose to do with all that concrete it's all Israeli concrete wow. in those tunnels That's so, so sad. anyway so, yeah Hamas really laughed at that one didn't they well I'm sure but at any rate, we have a uh, special video interview that we want to share with you, and we'll come back after we're done. Prepare to meet some nice ladies. As I was coming in to do update news on Friday, I was met by some partners from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Then they started telling me their story, and you have got to hear this. So, hey, welcome to GLC. This is Priscilla Lockyer and her daughter, Sarah. Say hi, everybody. Hi. hi. <laughs> really, really. I think the providence of God that brought you here that we would meet you. And it was, it's you. great. The timing on this is as amazing as the story that you're going to share about your husband. Tell us about your husband. Well, my husband uh, is Robert Lockyer, and he worked at White Sands Missile Range. He was an electrical engineer. And... Uh, in the late 1980s, early 1990s, um, he developed, he was he, a team of three men. He was selected. And uh, they developed the um, first, like a computer that could track like a human eye. Hmm. And um, that uh, computer system that they developed was laid the groundwork for the human uh, the, the shield that's in, the iron shield that's in. For the, the Iron Dome. For the Iron Dome system that's, they're using in Israel. That's saving them right now. That's saving them, yes, right now. And uh, so anyway, he, uh, it, it, it was the very first, his math was the basis for all that. It was the first, um, why don't you tell Sarah? <laughs> this is her daughter. This is my husband's daughter, Sarah. <laughs> uh, the math that he used, um, my dad, we didn't know. Well, I mean, we did know he was brilliant. But um, after he passed away last year, um, some of his coworkers came up to us and were saying that he was one of the most brilliant mathematicians and that they'd ever seen. And um, and he, he was very good at math. He, he, 
he taught me some math and I was trying to learn algebra and he would back into the answer using calculus. <laughs> and then I was just sitting there like, I have no clue what you just did. I'm in eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, so he was this really amazing math person and we, we knew he was good at that, but just because he worked for the Department of Defense and then just what he was doing, we, we didn't know all the stuff he did. Um, so he developed the math that, um, that they used for the trackers so that if uh, like a missile goes off, um, the camera can find it because they go so fast. So you were, you were saying earlier, they go like Mach 3, mm -hmm. some of those, mm -hmm. and, um, and they go so fast, like speed of sound, speed of, you, you, you know, they're over here and you hear them over here. And um, so he developed the math for this, the, tr the camera to, to follow it so it can actually follow the missile so that they can get coordinates to, to shoot them okay, down. Okay, so my big question is, wow. is, how did it end up in the hands of the Israeli government? Now, your dad, your husband, was not working for the, the government, really? Was he a government no, he employee? Was, he, he was a government employee, and he worked for the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was happening is at White Sands at the time is they would fire the missiles but they were um, using handheld, a person would mm -hmm. hold the camera and try to follow the missile as it was as it launched. Fast. Yeah. <laughs> but they would lose, uh, but a person couldn't move the camera fast enough. And so they would lose data. So he developed, so to speak, the first uh, computer that could track like a human eye. Wow. And so what, and then they put it on a machine, of course. And then so then whenever they launched the missile, they could follow the missile and track it. And, and um, yeah. it was on TV, like a camera. And then they had all the data. Well, what happened was, is shortly after he developed this, um, he did all the math, uh, math to, to develop this. Um, they, Israel invited him uh, to come to Israel. They, he was they, a they guest heard about of, it. Yeah, the, they the were a guest. Israeli of, government heard about his research. And he became, he was a guest of the Israeli government and he went to Israel and he took the, the TV trackers with, you know, to set up these instrumentation that he had developed. And train them. And to train them on it. Yeah. And then it was um, that technology, it was the foundation for um, the technology that's being used now. For the Iron Dome. For the Iron Dome yeah. and for like smart bombs and um, like pinpoint things. Like my uncle works uh, with the government on some stuff and he was saying that my he was looking for stuff like that um information um back a long time ago like in the 90s so they could do tracking for stuff for air force and different contracts and things and um and then he found out about my dad's work <laughs> and um, so he said that they use it also as a basis for development for like smart bombs like they can have a tower and they'll have like a sniper in the tower that's taking out people like in Iraq and they can't get to just that tower without having massive casualties. So um, it, they develop smart bombs that can pinpoint in to that, just the top of the tower and take out the sniper with like a smart bomb or missile so then they don't destroy the other everything. areas or everything. Wow. <laughs> you also mentioned that your husband, when he developed this math, that he was invited to a symposium in Paris, was that right? Yes. Uh -huh. And what happened on that? Well, he was invited because it was the first time this type of thing had been developed. And so he was invited to this symposium in Paris, France, but he turned it down because um, he, want, he declined due to national security concerns because he was working for the Department of Defense and the research that he did was for the Department of Defense and they didn't want to give that uh, research to like Russia or China or anybody wow. that could take it and use it. So how amazing though, how really amazing. And then you're telling me how you guys discovered GLC. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tell us how, because you're over in Las Cruces, New Mexico. All we have over there is a translator, something. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not a big full power station like over here. Well, what happened was um, my husband re retired. He became ill, and he retired. And um, so he was, we uh, decided we didn't want cable anymore. We just got rid of our cable. And so all we had was a TV antenna. 
And so uh, he was just going through, you know, the channels, and then we, he came across GLC, and it was like, we didn't even get a good cha a picture. It was snowy. Snowy. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but he got real interested in watching. You could just, hear. You could hear it very well. Yeah. And occasionally we could adjust the antenna and get a little bit of a picture. If the wind was right. Yeah. <laughs> if the wind was right. <laughs> <laughs> like rabbit ears. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. my goodness. How fun. Oh, cloud, yeah. cover. cloud cover was right. Yeah. yeah. And so anyway, and so he just got real interested in it. And uh, so... We just kind of left it on. We would just listen to it all day. And then we just, that's how we got started with GLC. That was back in 2009, 2010. And we've since upgraded with Roku. So we actually can see you now. <laughs> yeah. We know what you look like now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Before, because I remember when we first got a clear picture, I was like, oh, that's what they look like. <laughs> <laughs> back in the, back the snow quick. <laughs> Yeah, it was <laughs> funny. <laughs> and then yeah. I could see your set because I never could see your set. I was like, oh, they have couches. <laughs> I don't know. And like a real TV station. I know. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, girls, I really appreciate you uh, agreeing. Yeah. It wasn't too much trouble to get you to do it, but it was a little bit of arm twisting. Wow. Well, yeah. So. But yeah. And my husband, I just want to say this. He really, really supports Israel, supported yeah. Israel. And we do too. And I just, uh, whenever we heard about the Iron Dome, um, it just really touched my heart because um, yeah. I think sometimes my husband thought that his work was kind of insignificant, mm. but it just, uh, I look back on it now and I see how God in his, um, uh, just put it all together that mm. he worked at that time for the Department of Defense and uh, the technology yeah. was developed and it has saved a lot of people's lives and it's well not amazing just, to me. not just saving a lot of people's lives your husband since he loved glc he obviously had a love for israel mm -hmm. yes oh and, yeah, he did. and for what he did to to be the birthing of the iron dome which is vital to israel's security yes. you know it's it's amazing mm -hmm. yeah. it's amazing how god does things that behind the scenes that we don't even know he's doing, yeah. you know? And so. his, uh, the math on that, of course, at the time, I don't, whenever he did that, you know, I don't think he realized the, the uh, ramifications, mm -hmm. the potential of that. Um, and that that would become a part of God's plan, plan. for his people in yeah. Israel. Right, mm -hmm. which is cool. Wow. So that just really, um, I just think it's just uh, really neat. <laughs> It's Thank beyond you. neat. It's yes, pretty, it is. pretty amazing. God in his tapestry. It was wonderful to get to meet you guys yeah. face to face. We're glad to meet you guys. Thank too. you for letting our viewing audience meet you too. Thanks. Thank you. Well, what do you think about that? Isn't that awesome? How amazing that the man who, who came up with the math so that they could calculate the trajectories of rockets being fired mm -hmm. on Israel to knock them out of the sky. Mm -hmm. And he watched GLC. His family loves GLC. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> and, and they weren't actually going to stay. They were leaving the property from the bookstore. They were leaving. And then all of a sudden they stopped, they turned around, and they got out of their cars and came over and then began to talk. Well, that's because they saw Rick standing there. <laughs> and they were like trying to pretend they didn't they didn't want to be too noticeable, but they wanted to meet him. It was really cute. It was really cute. Their whole story then, it was just, it's amazing. It was. The foreknowledge of God. Yes. Well, God has a plan. And anyone who's uh, willing to use their talent for him, he'll use it. That's absolutely true. And you never know. You never it's like, know. Um, did he die last year? Yes, was it? that's what they said. Last, yes. last year yeah. that he died? what we think might be significant, insignificant. Mm -hmm. God says, no, that's a yeah. key part. Well, look what, yeah. what the Iron Dome has done oh, yeah. in the past three weeks. Over 3,200 rockets being yeah. fired on Israel. 90% of them knocked out. Well, we love Hallelujah. you, and we will see you again tomorrow. Have a good evening. God bless you.